everyone. In tonight's video I'm going to talk about some feathers and particularly it's about feathers uh, that have biot and biot you can find on many feathers but uh, it's the size of the feather that determines uh, whether you're going to have some useful biot or not. Uh, you have this wider edge of the feather and you have this more narrow. Traditionally this one is used as bite, this one here, and it's a very good material. Uh, this is peacock feather, peacock's feather. This is also peacock's feather, so I have male and female option. Uh, they, they're both beautiful to work with, they're pretty durable, and I love them. Uh, so let me just put this away. Then you could just buy save yourself some trouble and buy yourself some turkey bites and this is one of my favorite it's in olive and again you have this wider edge here and you have this more narrow one in the inside or you can just buy them stripped already pre-dyed so you don't have to bother with stuff like that um, I never bothered to tie these so in this video I'm going to talk about biots, how to tie them, how to make the most of them and a couple of tips to help you tie better and more durable flies. So without further ado, let's just get into tying. For the biots you have two options when it comes to tying it in. I just need to split this. I have two together. You have two options basically when you take the biot. You have this semi-translucent edge and you can just use it as a leading edge and go towards the eye and you'll get this 3D effect, you'll get those ribs or you can tie this um, leading edge to face backwards and then you'll get just flat body with nice again color segmentation, it will get uh, dark and light in color I prefer to have, have this, uh, let's call it 3D segmentation. Um, I'll start with 8 through 0 thread that can get flattened, and that is super important for tying these flies. Somewhere around here, I'll just start the fly because that's how much I want to go with by it, and that's more or less where I want to attach wings and start thorax. So, try to go with flat thread, cover the hook, shank, and then let's talk about how to attach this without having any troubles. Uh, because this thin part is obviously very thin and sometimes you don't even see where is this leading edge and where is those, this rich edge. You just counterspin the bobbin holder so the thread jumps to your left and go into the wider portion of it go with one just one or two wraps gentle wraps no tension obviously and then tighten everything up so as you can see let me just go back because it's not flat enough counter spin the bobbin so counter spin the bobbin anti-clockwise direction to get this flat thread and smooth body as smooth as, as you can so the semi-translucent edge faces downwards now and when I lift it up and start dropping it will face towards the eye of the hook now I want as flat thread as possible because I want to create slight taper over here not necessary but it looks nicer and the flat thread or well flat thread and uh, smooth underbody is very important for very practical reasons it's for the durability of your fly because if you don't have flat and smooth underbody you will have uh, difficulties uh, not difficulties but you may decrease the, the durability of your fly now, let me go let me just see where it goes Okay, flatten the thread a little bit more and 
as you can see taper here uh, more abrupt taper here because if it's super abrupt it won't be good the the, the material will just slide slip and they would be difficult to control I'll use some super glue just a tiny little drop well, I have to force it out I guess yeah use just a thin layer you can always remove the excess don't use too much the reason why I'm using gel uh, is because it's much easier to control it doesn't soak into materials and well I forgot to do something that's quite important it's to split this uh, by it lengthwise to make it thinner okay my bad the reason why I'm doing it this is to you will see soon well this will be okay so catch it with hackle pliers now, as I was saying, bias is very flat, obviously, and flat underbody makes it better, so they will adhere to one to another better if everything is flat, flat. If you have ridged underbody with bumps, uh, the underbody will lay against the bias with less surface, and the glue will stick less, I guess but if you have a smooth smooth surface then it will lay perfectly and it will just be more durable and well you have more control over everything now i'm getting into this cut part as you can see and because it's thinner i'll be having less bulk here that's the whole point of it see this is my effective body length more or less and now i have more control or this by it, uh, the last part one two here move the thread away so I can cut the excess tighten everything up create slight taper here looks okay that's it now because I, I want to attach CDC here I need some tension and CDC I'm using three CDC feathers but look at the length of them it's quite small those feathers are quite small because I want to utilize thin rachis here I just want to have thin rachis and rachis let me just show you that well good example here old feather just cut feather and you will see So look at the shape of this it's kind of oval so if you try to tie a feather like this this side here is flat and it will stay flat so it, the feather will stay in position but if you try to do it like this the feather will try to move left and right because this edge top edge and bottom edge here are kind of oval same applies here so either you can use flat nose pliers to smash those uh, rakes or just use barbs to kind of stab stabilize the feather measure it transfer hands well i want this thread to be a little bit more back and i'm catching thread on my broken skin here so pay attention to your hands Three wraps are more than enough. I'm keeping everything on the top. Now I'll cut this by an angle. Now imagine if I had more thick rakes, I would make even more uh, bulk here, which I don't want to. Now what I like to do, I like to 
go with my thread and cover this taper of CDC because it will catch CDC much firmly, much more firmly, and it will just lock it down. It will lock all those barbs into place. Um, what I rarely do is I make I rarely make a loose dubbing noodle, but this time that's my intention. So I'm making loose dubbing noodle and relatively thick. So as you can see, this is what I get. But to compensate, you have to use as tight thread wraps as you can, because you don't want to lose a lot of lot of dubbing here. So pull those hairs back. Make one or two wraps just to keep them under control. Counter spin the thread to make it flat, and then we finish the head. It's a very simple fly. Okay, that's it. Cut with a couple of strokes through the hair. You'll just brush out those long guard hairs and flesh material in this case and make this more buggy looking fly. Oops. So this is one of my favorite caddis flies, simple flies with a couple of tricks that we utilized. Now let me just show you one bonus trick here. And bonus trick is very simple. Instead of cutting the bayet lengthwise as I was well I did but too late. You can cut it lengthwise like this and then just have more control over the shape of it. You can just utilize this very often forgotten part of the feather, those longer barbs. So you have buy it here, but utilize those barbs and look at the result. So all you need is one barb. and use it exactly the same as by it. Flat, flat thread is again very important. This time I won't bother to make any taper, just to make it faster. Same applies. You can use this uh, wide flat edge and just lead the barb through the thread then just just go and cover everything here now let's go and see the result now advantages of this is it's easier to manipulate it's more or less equally uh, durable but what you get is more narrow, uh, easier to work with kind of bayet material. I love it and it's great. So as you can see those ribs, 3D ribs are more densely spaced, uh, which personally I do I like more. In bayet you don't get that, you have them um, increasing in space in spacing and then when I get here just catch it and get and get your bite here I'll just cut it cover it up and finish off the fly again very neat nice body it's perfect uh, for nymphs as well. You can make some Betis nymphs with this or whatever you like. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you like this video and see you next week.